Hold on, no matter how expensive your car is, it's made from a coil of metal, even if it costs a half a million dollars. Let's go to the very beginning of the production process. First, huge robots roll out giant coils of aluminum into molds. Then a 5,000-ton press presses the sheets of metal. They're shaped into the desired forms. This enormous press has to create all the parts of the car – the hood, the trunk, the body, and the small parts like mirrors and doors. The car body is assembled from about 500 different parts and joined together with about 2,000 welds. When the car body is assembled, the conveyor belt sends it to the next step – painting. It all starts with a primer. It makes the car surface smooth, protects it from corrosion, UV light, and even extreme temperatures. Also, the paint sticks easily to the primer. Then, robotic hands with sprays coat the body with five coats of paint. In total, it takes about 100 pounds of paint for one car. To make the paint layer as even as possible, sometimes we use electricity. For example, when we need to paint car doors. They're suspended on a conveyor, and an electric current is sent through them. The atomized paint in the air has a different charge, and it's attracted to the metal part like a magnet. As a result, we have the same thickness of paint on every inch of the part. After priming and painting, the body is sent for polishing. This room has bright lights so that the mechanics can see even the slightest scratch. The car body is polished to a shine and then sent for assembly. For now, no doors are hung on the car for easy access inside. Parallel to the assembly of the body, we prepare interior parts. Huge chunks of leather are laid on a flat surface and examined for any imperfections. Then a laser creates a projection of the desired parts on the piece of leather. The parts drawings are placed as close together as possible, like puzzles, so that there's as little waste as possible. The robot then begins to cut out these parts. The leather pieces are sewn together to make a kind of bag that needs to be stuffed with soft material. We put a foam rubber seat in an airtight bag, then we pump the air out of it. The foam rubber seat shrinks, and now we can put the leather bag over it. The seat and backrest are then put together, just like the other soft parts of the car's interior, and wait for their turn to be installed. Back to our car's body. It's time to install the heart of the car here, the engine. The car's body is lifted a little higher, and a small, human-operated elevator lifts the engine, which weighs 300 to 500 pounds under the hood of the car. The engine is mounted on special frames with small vibration-absorbing mounts. These are needed to keep the vibrating engine from making the whole car shake. When the engine is running, there are dozens of explosions inside it every second. A mixture of fuel and air is pumped inside the cylinder through a valve. Then the spark plug gives off a spark. It is usually a small electric arc. This energy is enough to make the fuel-air mixture literally explode. This force pushes the engine cylinder. It goes down and spins the main shaft. The cylinder then returns to its starting position, and the exhaust gases are thrown through another valve into the exhaust system. Following the engine, we install the transmission or gearbox. This mysterious box contains two rotating shafts with gears of different sizes. It's connected to the engine through the clutch disc. When you press the clutch pedal, the clutch disc disengages, and the gears inside the gearbox stop turning. You can now change gears from first to second and so on. One shaft moves relative to the other, and the rotation is transferred from the different size gears to the others. When you release the clutch pedal, the clutch disc reconnects the engine and gearbox again. Only now, in a different gear, the gears transmit more or less rotation. Our car is a rear-wheel drive, so the gearbox is connected to the drive shaft and differential. This box between the rear wheels transmits the rotation of the drive shaft to the shaft with the wheels. At the same time, we install the car's suspension. These parts connect the wheels to the body of the car. They include a shaft that transmits rotation to the wheels, steering beams that change the wheel's direction depending on the steering position, and shock absorbers. Now, we're installing brake discs and wheels. When the car drives, these discs spin with the wheels. When you press the brake pedal, the brake fluid pushes against the pistons, making the brake pad clamp the disc. As a result, the car's wheels begin to spin slower and the vehicle stops. Because of the friction between the pads and the disc, the brake disc gets very hot. Sometimes you see the brake disc get red hot. The next stop on our assembly line is to install the exhaust system. You've seen these bundles of pipes that come out of the engine. That's the exhaust manifold. The exhaust gases are collected from each cylinder and go into the main pipe. Then we need to reduce exhaust noise. That's the purpose of the muffler. It usually has several chambers. The gases go into these chambers one by one and reduce their speed. 
The exhaust system ends with a chrome exhaust pipe. It's where the gases leave the car and are thrown outside. Now, we lower the car down and install an air filter under the hood. It's where the air is cleaned before it enters the engine cylinders through the pipes. Generator. Your engine turns the wheels and the generator, which creates electricity to power the whole car. Install a fuel filter along with the regulator and fuel pressure sensors. It'll make sure that you get the right amount of clean fuel into your engine. Battery. It stores electrical energy, and the generator charges it. The battery gives the power to start the engine. If you've ever seen one car wired to another, it means it has a low battery. Then the engine starts from the other car's battery. Then the generator starts running, and the car starts charging. And right behind the front grille of the car is the engine cooling radiator. Its principle of operation is similar to that of an air conditioner or a fridge. The coolant takes the heat from the engine and evaporates. Then it goes into the radiator. When you drive, air currents pass through the radiator grill and cool the vapor until it turns back into a liquid. In colder times, you need to fill the radiator tank with antifreeze. Water freezes at low temperatures, but antifreeze will not turn to ice and ruin the radiator. Another essential part of the car is the electrical relay. Here are the fuses and circuit breakers for all the car's electrical systems. If the engine is the heart, the electrical relay is the nervous system. The wires go from here to all the different parts of the car. There may be about one mile of wires in total in a car. Then dozens of other parts are installed, like brake and washer fluid tanks, windshield wiper actuators, and so on. At the same time, we install parts of the car's interior. We put the front panel and center console between the driver's and passenger seats. Then it's the turn of the front and rear seats. Then we place the steering wheel and the airbag box in it. All the electronics are connected to the car's main relay under the hood. Hey, don't forget about the cool sound system, gotta have that! Then we need to install a front windshield and a rear windshield. Next, it's time to play some decorative parts, like the rocker panel and chrome inserts. And just now, we install the doors. The car is ready, but we have a few more tests to do. The vehicle is inspected again under a bright light to see any scratches or defects that may have appeared during assembly. Then we send the car to the shower room. Here we simulate heavy rain. The mechanic inside inspects every inch of the vehicle to make sure it is watertight and no liquid is sneaking in. Now the car gets on the dynamo and we test how it works in real life. This test simulates the road and the car accelerates as fast as designed. The mechanics test if the vehicle accelerates and brakes properly. If the tests are successful, the car is considered complete. Congratulations! Now it will go by ship or big trucks to dealerships where you can buy it. Then the fun really begins.